Hey, hey, math friends. So our learning target today is that I can write and graph something called an inequality. So we've been talking about equalities, like equational work. But what about something that's called an inequality? So we're going to look at things like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So we're going to use symbols to compare the two quantities versus an equal sign. So when things aren't exactly equal. So um, some little tricks that we've talked about is that this symbol here looks like the letter L. So then it becomes like less than. Just some tricks that have been used in the past that kids say are really helpful. So then, excuse me, by default, of course, then this would have to be your greater than. And then you can also include equal to as an option. So it doesn't just have to be less than, it can also be what's called equal to. So this little bar underneath each of these. So this would be less than or equal to. This would be greater than or equal to. So that's some of the language that we're going to use today. And then we're going to talk about what happens when we graph that. When we graph those, if it's just greater than or less than, we use these open circles for our graphs which means it's not equal to that number. It's just really close to that number and the numbers that are greater than. Um, greater than or equal to would include that value. So it would be that number and the numbers above or that number and the numbers below. So we'll get some practice with that if that doesn't quite make sense yet. So that's just some good notes there. All right, with that said, let's talk about just start off things that would fall under these categories. Well, first thing would be in the state of Minnesota to get your driver's license, you have to be age 16. So equal to 16 or greater than 16 to get your driver's license in the state of Minnesota. So if you're 16, you can get it 17, 18, 19, and so on. Really, in the state of Minnesota, you're eligible to get a driver's license as long as you can still pass the written test, the vision test, and the driver's test. So age of 16 and so on. So to graph that, we would say, well, if you're 16, exactly equal to 16, you can get a license. Not 15 and almost 16. Nope, you have to be 16 to get your license or 17 or 18 or any combination of ages in between there, maybe 16 and a half and so on. So our inequality in the graph would look like that, a closed circle at 16, meaning if you are 16, you can get a license and greater than 16. So you would shade all the way to the right, make a nice solid arrow so you can see. Other examples would be sports teams. So I know that a lot of the softball teams and sport teams have these teams called like U14. I play on the U14 hockey team, U14 softball team. So that means that if you're equal to 14, you can play on the team. Or if you are less than 14, you can play on the team. Now, if you're 15, nope, you got to move to the higher, the next level team. So when we go to graph that then, we would say that all the kids that are exactly equal to age 14 can play on the team. And any of the ages that are less than 14 can play on the team. So if your 12 year old little sister is going to sub on your team, that will work. But can your 15 year old sister sub on the team? No. So that's an example of inequality. Other examples of inequality would be something like where it's like a combined inequality. So for example, I've seen before, I was at McDonald's Playland once and it made me think of math, of course it did, that it said that anyone between the ages of three and 12 could play in the McDonald's Playland. So the inequality then would say that if you're age three, you can play in the McDonald's Playland. If you're age 12, you can play in the McDonald's Playland. Or if you're any age in between, you can play in the McDonald's Playland. So if your age is between three and 12, you can play in the McDonald's Playland. So age three to age 12, we would enclose that on both sides. So our alligators would be running in the same direction here. So the number ages four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11 all work? And the halves of that too, like 11 and a half works, but does 12 and a half work? No. So that's just, that's just kind of the warm up of what we're gonna do today. So that was actually that screen. So let's talk about um, what we're gonna do today. We're gonna graph and write the inequalities. Now on this first page, all those examples I give you all were shaded in circles. I didn't mean to do that. It just, now that I'm thinking about it, it just happened that way. In our work, you'll see that not all the way, that's not always true. So remember that a math inequality is a sentence that compares two quantities using symbols. So the symbols that we're gonna use in our work today is greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. All right. So first example, the price is $10 or more. So I'm going to write the inequality down here just because of space. The price is greater than 10. So 10, 11, 12, 13, or equal to. It's either 10 or more. So when we go to graph this, the rule is going to be that you're going to put the 10 in the middle. I'd like you to put one on each side of those numbers. One less, one more, so we get an idea what, what, what we're talking about here. We're going to shade the 10 in. Because any price that's 10 is going to work. Or any price more than 10 is going to work. So that should be your graph. So go ahead and check out that first inequality that we just did. All right, all right, all right. Next example. The price is $5 or less. So if I just brainstorm some ideas of what are five or less, well, you all probably have heard of the store called Five Below. $5 or less in that store. So how do we write the inequality? Well, if the price is less than five, it's in the store. Can it be in the store and be equal to five? Uh-huh, five or less. So again, we haven't done any open circles yet. Boy, I really should have mixed these up a little bit more, but I promise we will get to some open circles. I've done all equal to ones, which I shouldn't have done it that way, but oh well, we're gonna stick with it. I'll show you some examples when it's not. So $5, yep, mm -hmm, that will work or less, $5 or less. So close circle, circle at five and all the prices that are less. All right, here we go. Let's look at the next page. I'm actually gonna skip that page only because I need to get some that get to some that were not, um, <laughs> that were not closed circles. Kind of messed up on that, didn't I? All right, so let's uh, do, I'm going to cut this one for now. Let's do this one over here. The price is less than negative four, essentially, is what we're saying here. So we have an open circle at negative four because this time it's just less than. Can't be equal to. Now let's be careful about this because the numbers that are smaller than negative four are negative five and negative six. The numbers that are bigger are negative three and negative two. So we have an open circle at negative four, and we're talking about all the prices that are less than that, that are smaller than that. And I guess the variable X was there, so we could have kept it with that. Notice that's an open circle this time because it's just the less than symbol. Less than symbols are open circles. Less than or equal to symbols are closed circles. So that's why we use the open circle this time. All right, let's try another one. Let's go do this one. The price is less than five. The price is less than five. So here's five. Open circle at five. Because it's just less than five. This is the five and below idea, except the most you have is $4.99. You can't, you don't have five. It doesn't say you have five or less. It's just as less than five. So we're going to shade to the left. Open circle, shade to the left. All right, let's try another one. Jumping around a little bit here. Let's go try this one here. Let's try talking about what happens if you have a graph. How do you get there? 
So the variable they tell us to use is t. We're looking at the numbers here that we have 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're talking about all the numbers that are greater than 7. But notice right there we have a closed and closed circle. So we're saying that it could also be equal to 7. So I'm going to skip the words here and just write the any. This is called the inequality. The inequality for that graph would be that all the t values that are greater than 7 are that matching that red line or equal to 7 match that red line. All right. Let's try these two. Why don't you try to see if you can figure out how to write this graph? And then we'll do the last one together. Go ahead and try, pause the video and try that. All right, you should have had time. So now we're going to unpause that video and give us a shot. The variable they're asking us to use is x. We're talking about all the x's. That are, it looks like we have 11, 10, 9, all the x's that are less than 11. Check out that open circle. Can it be equal to 11? No, just less than 11. So all the x's that are less than 11 would be our inequality there. So that's our work. I think, oh, we're going to do this last one together, I said, and then we'll wrap it up. So this next one is a little bit tricky. This is always the toughest one. But we can see that this is kind of like the McDonald's playland, that our values range from 3 to 6. The variable that we have here is A. All right. So we know that A sits somewhere between here. So it's less A is less than or equal to 6. But A is greater than 3. So we're saying that A is bigger than 3. Because it is. It's one of these numbers in here. Some One of those numbers in there is our A. It's our variable A is one of those. And all those are greater than 3. But the tricky part is when we write our statement down here, all the signs have to go in the same direction. So I can't write 3 is greater than A because that's not true. 3 isn't greater than A. No, 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 no. A is greater than 3. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it and throw it in here. Take the sign and flip it to get it in here. So if you notice up here, we have that the alligator is eating the a, a greater than three. So make sure when we write this statement right here that we still have the alligator eating the a, and we do. So is it true that a is greater than three as the same thing as if a is greater than three, that means three is, three is less than a. So my final statement here is three is less than a, and a is less than or equal to 6. So 3 is less than a, which is true because a is in here somewhere. And a is less than or equal to 6. So 3 is less than a and a is less than or equal to 6. So that is the final one. It's kind of a double um, way to write that inequality. All right, good job today. So that our work today was basically the quick summary. Um, you might want to pause and rewind this video a few times if you struggled on some of those big concepts. But if you have greater than, it's an open circle. If you have less than, it's an open circle. If you have greater than or equal to, it's a shaded in circle. And if you have a less than or equal to, it's a shaded in circle. That was kind of the big idea of inequality. Great job today. That's it for I can graph, write and graph inequalities. Have a glorious night. Good night.